Fearsomely fast, but full of feel. Tenacious, but tactile. Sharp, but sensuous. Track, road. This is the McLaren 600LT Spider. So I drove this out in the States on a track out there. It didn't get very long in it. So I wanted to have a bit more time behind the wheel. Who wouldn't? This one feels a little differently set up than the ones I've tried before. It was done slightly looser at the rear. This feels like it's totally tied down, to be honest. Traction is phenomenal on the way out of corners in this. It feels like I'm moving on the front much more. It's only got 225 front section tyres, but I just remember the balance being a bit more nose grip, rear light. Perhaps this is more of a customer setup. I'm not sure, but I'd like the old balance back. Wow, this is fast. I love being able to put the roof down as well. So you can hear that. Musical it probably isn't, but exciting it is. It's a bit like a big bike somehow. And then those reports. Yes, this is fundamentally the same engine used in every other McLaren of the modern era. I understand that the ubiquity irritates some. However, in this case the argument could be made that it's impressive you get an engine related to the three quarters of a million pound Senna in the 200,000 pound 600 LT. The numbers for this car, in case you need reminding, are 592 brake horsepower and 456 pounds foot of torque. Not huge increases on the standard car, but the character feels much angrier, particularly with those bangs on the downshift. Perhaps McLaren customers like clay pigeon shooting at the weekend. but actually it deals with the bumps incredibly well. It feels beautifully secure. See that he hates from the top AC and exhaust. Eye popping braking. One of the best bits about this car. Feels like it can do this all day long. Woo! There's that thunderstorm coming. But I don't want to stop. If you're getting wet, then you're just not driving fast enough. Thunderstorm or not, eventually every track day must end, but the 600LT doesn't stop performing on the drive home. fight taken out of you after the track day, all the need for speed. This is still a really enjoyable car to just ease your way home in. On the road I think there's a lovely balance between ride comfort and connection. The steering is some of the best out there available today because it's still a hydraulically power assisted system and it does make a difference. Before you say it, yes, lots of EPAS systems are now incredibly good. The best give you more than enough feedback to not only place the car accurately, but sense the grip and feel the loads. However, the key distinction that I've found is that they do filter out what could probably be deemed as unnecessary texture to give a cleaner sensation than with a hydraulic system like this one. You just get more of the the granular feel. It doesn't necessarily add anything to particularly the way that you can get the car down the road, but it's just a little bit more talkative. This particular car has got a lot of options on it, actually, about 48,000 pounds worth, 24 of which, so half, is all in exposed carbon fibre. This unnecessary, I think, really. And then there are things like the power adjusted steering column here. You don't need that on a 600 LT. Neither actually do you need these seats. They look quite fancy, but I think they're just a bit of overkill. The standard bucket seats that you get, which are a step up from the comfort seats, 
are wonderful because they're really sort of they hold you perfectly like a sort of big baseball glove I think so I don't think these are strictly necessary to be honest I'd delete the IRS infotainment system too as it still feels pretty unintuitive in fact oral entertainment on the road is perhaps the 600 LT's biggest failing the engine is certainly not the most attractive sounding at road speeds most of the time anyway <laughs> still get the cracks. Yes, this weighs about 50 kilos more than the coupe, but for me, the ability, particularly in fact, on the journey home, on the road, to put the roof down, makes a big difference. In a car that is all about the feel, it's not just about the speed. This is not the fastest car McLaren does, but to me, I think it's the one that I want. And it's because I think it's the most interactive. All the information that you relied on as you squeezed the last ounces of performance from it on track now also provide the entertainment on the way home. Take the brakes, for example. As incredibly fearsomely strong as they are on the track, they've still got enough feel and progression in them to just trim a line, just be brushed on the way into a corner. They work on the road too. I love how small this car feels. It really works as a size on the road because you don't have that supercar thing of breathing in every time you come to a gap and everything feels nicely accessible. You can see both front arches. It doesn't feel massive. It feels wieldy. It certainly works in this country. And a good British B road. So from Castle Coombe to open countryside, the 600 LT is an all round entertainer. The fundamentals of the sports series cars were pretty much spot on to begin with, but as with the 675 LT before it, the long tail alterations that go into making this perform better against the stopwatch also lift its interaction when the pace is more prosaic. Hardcore, but haptic. Intense, but interactive. Track, road. <laughs>